What's going on, Paisano? Z here. Coming at you guys, well, with another market watch today. Listen, I was born in the 80s, raised in the 90s, and I was raised with a lot of crazy good 90s action movies in which there was a good guy and there was a bad guy, and the good guy always, like, won, and at the end of the movie, the bad guy would, like, come back for, like, a last hurrah, and then the good guy would, like, shoot him or whatever, and then he kissed the girl, and then rolled the credits and movie's over. This band was, feels like the bad guy just, at the end of the movie, just walked into the good guy, tapped him on the shoulder and said, I'll see you in movie number two and probably movie number three, and then we'll just we'll hash it out there. That's what it felt like, because I feel like Konami just didn't do the best job with this band list. Now, is it the worst band list? No, we have definitely a lot more worse band list in this game, but is it a pretty bad band list? I think so. <laughs> now, not because of Max C still being banned. No, 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 no. I, I've been saying for a while now. I do. I would like to see Max C now come up with the band list, but it makes more sense for it to come out with the release of Cross Eyed Designator up in March. So that does make sense. What I'm saying is, you, you, you missed a lot, Konami. You know, whenever there's a card in this game, for anyone that's playing for a long while, you already know, but whenever there's a card in this game that says you can't do nothing to your opponent, Konami's pretty good at stopping that card immediately. Like, I mean, the general consensus amongst all plays is, yeah, that's not going to last long. Because it doesn't. Konami has a hist history of shutting that down. Cards that remotely stop your opponent from doing certain things on a turn, Konami is phenomenal at stopping that. But as we will talk about in this market watch, it's not the case. Number one. Number two, it's not what also what Konami hits in the ban list that changes the market. It's what Konami doesn't hit that also changes the market. And that's something that a lot of people also forget about. I mean, with the release of Justice Impact, it, well, here in the States, coming soon, um, Drytons obviously are going to be, or Drytron, because uh, some people get triggered in the comments, like, get over yourself. Uh, I, I get really upset. Uh, you know, are going to be coming out soon. Anyway. Uh, Drytons are going to be coming out soon, and what we're going to be seeing is definitely this deck seeing meta play. Now, can I see as much of a play uh, with Link Cross off the picture? I don't know, but I do know is there's multiple variants of this deck, and with the release of it coming out, and then subsequently afterwards there being a um, there being a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh extravaganza, they're going to see play. I think we can all agree that this will definitely see play. The only question is how much will see play? Would it be still be one of the best decks in the game? don't know to be honest with you i do know there's a lot of cool tech that people kind of forgot about if you hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell when i did my mark watch live streams you know that one of the cards i thought was really good with drytons it's arthur christia this card is insanely good with drytons which would you just need four fairies in the graveyard you bring out christia add one of those fairies back to your hand and then you just make your opponent no one no one special summons that just no more special summoning that's it it just says no it just says no more special summoning that's what that card says that card's legal, <laughs> and you can search it out with Cyber Angel Ben 10. Uh, you can also use Virtual Sanctuary in case you don't have your Cyber Angel Ben 10. I know Drytons have a field spell, but why not give them a multitude of options when activating terraforming? I mean, seriously, Virtual Sanctuary is still a phenomenal card that a lot of you can play kind of forgot about, and yeah, it's a card you can use also with Drytons, whether you're using it with Drytons or, or, or you know, Drytons, um, Cyber Angels or Cyber Lights, whatever it is called, or anything like that. I still think this is a phenomenal card that everyone kind of forgot about because the last time this card saw a play, well, was when Ben 10 and Hell Perfection was like one of the meta decks and they kind of went away. But these are two phenomenal cards everyone kind of forgot about. Cyber Angel Ben 10 is starting to cool off from its high price point. The secret coming out of Dragon's Legends Unleashed with a $12 market price is roughly around $11. I mean, it does go quickly back up to $13. <laughs> But it's not spiking higher. It's trying to stabilize, but it's barely holding on to that price point. It is starting to go down. And I do think in time after a while, Cyber Angel Ben 10 will hit around 6 or $7. Then we have True King of All Calamities. Yeah, you missed this, Konami. Like, this was such an obvious, like, oh, this card's definitely going to get banned. A card that says your opponent can't do nothing? Yeah, that should be get banned. Pretty, pretty obvious. Not in the eyes of Konami. This is the bad guy that just comes back and goes, I will see you in movie two. And then we're supposed to go, okay, sure. Listen, True King of All Calamities, originally coming out of Maximum Crisis, still roughly around two bucks. And it'll probably remain the two, three dollars with shipping and whatnot. This card is broken. The fact that this card does not get hit in advance is kind of laughable and cryable. That's a word. I, I just don't understand what Konami's doing. In fact, Zutobi Zexel didn't get hit in the advance as well. You know. You talk about Zaxel, the thing that should have been hitting the balance, the thing that says your opponent can't do anything, that should have been hitting the balance. Hey, you know what? 
Missing Mime got hit, right? No, it didn't. It, it didn't. Missing Mime didn't get hit either. <sighs> this video is not me about complaining about the balance. I mean, think about it, guys. Konami hit Shockmaster. This is a great card to be hitting the balance. It makes sense to hit Shockmaster, which takes three level fours. Okay, it makes sense. Okay, and then hit you typically Zexo, which I mean, it's I don't know what it takes because I just have to hit one card to bring it out. That's that's, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do a market watch video yesterday because I just kept getting angry and angry and angry at this game at this company of their incompetence. But looking at Shockmaster, can we just at least say unlock the shock? Can we just do it already? Can we just get it done? Like if you're if we're going like full like whatever, can we just do it already with Shockmaster? The Shonen Jump Magazine promo version, by the way, with a $16 market price, is roughly around $15, almost there $16. And with the release and with these cards being out, once again. With the cards of True King of All Calamities, Utopic Zexel, Mystic Mine, like Shockmaster, in that scenario, that's actually the good guy. And this card's another phenomenal example of releasing a really bad card to kind of stabilize other bad cards. It's not good. It's not good. I'm not saying it's good. We're, not, we're, not, we're, we're beyond that already. We're beyond that after the second broken card was out and just out and about. But let's be real, that is the uh, consequence of the meta we're currently in right now. Red Star Dragoon actually didn't get touched at all in the balance, which kind of makes sense. I mean, the card's really not doing as much. Um, it's really good, I, I feel like, in more of a mid-range kind of meta, which I do think we are going into. Even though True King of All Calamities is out there, and True King of All Calamities is definitely a card's going to be abused by both Dryton and another deck I'll talk about in a second. Yeah, I do think that uh, Red Star Dragoon, as we enter a mid-range format, fits perfectly like a glove in that format. Everyone kind of fucking forgot about that, rightfully so. I mean, it's really hard to make when your opponent goes like five in the gates past turn. But I do think Red Eyes Dr. Gruen can be one of those cards that can't see play in a mirror format. So don't think that this card's done. Don't sell your copies. This card is still good to go. Once again, Numeron Networks to answer the question of how do I make Ze Zexel turn one for free? In fact, you play two Zexels, and you make two of them. You can play Memories of Hope, draw four cards. <laughs> That's Yu-Gi-Oh. Listen, I, I think that um that Virtual definitely is a deck that's obviously good to hold. It's good to play. My problem with Virtual World has always been that Virtual World can lose to itself at times, but it is still a really good deck. And I, I think with um Virtual World, uh, Mahime, I always love that, uh, Lulu, Starting to go, what's going down from twenty dollars is now starting to go back up. Uh, Yu Gi Oh! Plays also looking at cards like Virtual World Kyubi. I mean, they always been playing it, but now they're looking at more of a card that you can play in a meta because this card is really good. And um, yeah, twenty one hundred attack is pretty relevant. I think Virtual Worlds definitely are going to be one of the best decks in the meta. I, I don't know if it's going to be consistently one of the best decks in the meta due to the fact that, like I said before, the deck can definitely lose to itself. It is a deck that can also bring out two VFDs, so there's also that. One of my, probably my favorite decks right now is going to be Zodiac Eldritch. Uh, looking at Zoo cards, you got Zodiac Grip Tail, which was in like $60. Um, right now, it's roughly around $45 in the market uh, for Zodiac uh, Whip Tail. Um, I, I think Zoo, Zoo in, in themselves is one of the, is going to be one of those decks because they can easily cheat out a Zeus, which obviously is a broken card. And if you're looking to pick up Eldritch, well, Eldritch the Golden Lord, Secret Slayers, Original Prince, Secret Rare, with a $41 market price. Well, that bad boy is roughly around $38 to $40. And to be honest with you, that's not bad. Now, if you say V, that's too much money, no big deal. Because if you want to get the other version of Elder the Golden Lord coming at a maximum gold, it's like seven bucks. You only need like two of these, by the way. Uh, so yeah, looking at Zeus, by the way, this is another card that yeah, the secret rare is like $47. The Starlight Rare went up a little bit and actually might start going up a lot. Starlight Rare's Divine Arsenal Zeus uh, with a $275 market price is roughly around $293. I think this card's going to start going up more and more and more. Once again, as we transition from a heavy turn one combo deck, okay, turn one, you go first, you create combo, to a more mid-range meta. Because I do think, and I still think, this is a mid-range meta we're entering in. We're, we're, we're at the front door. Konami could have at least let us in, okay? Give us a little tea, crumpets, or whatever. But... We are entering that. We are headed towards that direction. And I feel like this card, Zeus, is one of those cards that are just insanely good in that kind of meta. It's either you have it or I'm cleaning your board out. And all I need is one Zodiac to do so. 
So that's really, really broken. So I think, yeah, once again, you get the Secret Rares, Zeus is no big deal. But if you want Starlight Rares, this card is about to hit some stupid numbers. Then we have Forbidden Droplet. Obviously, one of the most best cards in the format. This was about like two months ago in one of my Market Watch videos. And I caught a lot of flack from it. But Forbidden Droplet, right, should do a Secret Rare, $87 market price. Well, Forbidden Droplets are roughly around 92 bucks. And they're rising, by the way. This card will only start rising even more so. This card is terrible in a heavy combo format because you don't have enough to establish your board. But in a mid-range format, every card that you activate, that chains, that chains, is just fodder for a Forbidden Droplet. This card's absolutely insane. And no doubt in my mind, we'll start seeing more main deck play. Drone Lockwood's yet another phenomenal card that's going to start seeing play. Being the fact that all the heavy combo decks are kind of pulling back. They're not dead. But I don't think any of the, the, the main deck, the tier 1 decks are dead, by the way. I just want to throw it out there. But I do think that Draw and Lockbird will have a heavy impact in, in a majority of decks in the meta right now. And I do think Draw and Lockbird Ultimate Rare OTS Storm Pack 8 with a $95 market price. I'm not even joking you. This card, this meta, this format is going to blow past $120. No doubt in my mind. Look at Draw and Lockbird Ultimate Rare. The value right now. <clears throat> Is roughly around $91 to $92. $91 to $92 for John Lockbird. This card's going past $120. Mark my words. Then we have Miscellaneousaurus. You forgot dinosaurs. You forgot dinosaurs. Could I? <laughs> but here's the problem with dinosaurs. And everyone kind of forgot about this. In a combo format, dinosaurs are pretty good. In a mid-range format, dinosaurs are trash. I'm just going to throw it out there. Your best play is trying to put as many buys on board hoping your opponent will not react and then when your opponent goes in a, in a combo format they have to do their, their own version of it in a mid-range format your opponent can set three face downs and laugh at you i mean literally they could do a lot of mean things that will force you to do a, th a lot of things that you just don't want to do if you're a dino player dinos are happy right now because they're like we are not touched and you should be if you're a dino player you definitely should be just realize in a mid-range format your, your deck's not good your deck's really good in combo in mid-range your deck's really bad. I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to start this format seeing dinos transition away. Not really towards being tier 1. Bougins got support. And it, it's like deja vu. I mentioned Bougins, I think, like a week ago. And they got support. And I really like Bougins. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this or not. But I love this deck a lot. I actually have the whole deck my rarity. But I had it forever ago. And every now and then, I like to look at it and go, Ah, what could be? Looking at Bougions, I really do hope Konami makes some more support for this deck. I think the art type is awesome. I think the storyline is awesome. And I would love to see this deck be, even at Team Open 5, would be a huge deal. Uh, Bougions are just an amazing deck. And, yeah, I mean, to see cards like Bougion Yamato, um, Astro Pack 5, Ultimate Rare with a $51 market price, hitting $70. And, by the way, after that $70 sale is gone, that bad boy is $90. Um, it is good to see, to be honest with you. This card originally was roughly around $12 OTs. When I first started doing market watches years ago, this card was, like, around, I think, $10 to $12. And I was looking at the camera going, who's not buying this card right now? Like, this card's an easy snap buy. We can always talk about Bushin, uh, Bushinki Amaterasu, the Ghost Rare. I'm not a big fan of it. It came out of that era of Ghost Rares when you just look at them and they scratch. I actually like the Ultimate Rares more. Um, but yeah, I mean, even Bushin, Bushin Tei Susunu Nano Wo Wo, Ultimate Rare at a $6 market price, which it was less, a lot less than that, by the way, for lightly played first editions. That value is roughly around $20 to $25. In fact, after that one sold, it's $30 for Susunu Nano Wo Sus Susan Owo. Susan Owo, okay. I hate that card's name. <laughs> um, also got Sheriff by coming out of Leg Legacy the Valiant. Another phenomenal card. A card not a lot of many players are looking at with a $3 market price. Um, looking at a first version of Sheriff, by the way. It's going to run you rough and almost near $5 a copy. And this is yet another phenomenal card in mid range format. Once again, that's the format we're entering in. We're not entering in heavy combo. Will heavy combo still be around? Yes. Will control still be around? Sure. But it's going to be dominated by a lot of mid-range decks because they realize that when your opponent goes double VFD, the best way to handle that is setting a lot of cards to get your opponent going, I bet you won't. Like, that's what they do. That's how they act. Anyway, looking at Shed Ride, it's obviously a phenomenal card in that kind of format because it replenishes your hand. So looking at Phantom Rage, what can we really say from this set? Well, I think Divine Zeus is a phenomenal card. That will have value. I think Alpha might have value. I think it has more value in mid-range format, and that's what we're entering in. So I think Alpha's a phenomenal card. Okay, so we got Zeus, we got Alpha. What else? 
Virtual world, I guess. Um, I mean, an ultra rare being $19 is fair, sure. Um, and, I mean, maybe Tri Brigade? What I'm trying to show you guys is the fact that Phantom Rage might still have some value. It's not going to have a lot of value. It's not going to be the big blockbuster money set. In fact, the big money moves that set will have will more than likely be from the Starlet rares as opposed to the rest of the rarity. I do think some of the other rarities will go up in value, but not like as high as we'll see increase in price as what we receive from the Starlet rares. Specifically, Zeus and Alpha. Why is that? Because those will see the most play, obviously. The problem with Phantom Rage and the problem with Core sets, I was talking about this the other day, actually. The problem with Core sets is Everyone's, everyone, you get investor looking at all previous core sets, seeing Starlet Risk, seeing the crazy high value those sets bring, even though sets aren't good, but they have that value. And then looking at Phantom Rage and knowing the fact that there are good Starlet Risk, this set has amazing Starlet Rares. Well, they went in and bought a lot. When everyone goes in and buys something and everyone has it, it's not that worth it. I mean, think about it. You know, if everyone had a huge chunk of gold, Nobody gold would be worthless. It'd be garbage. If you, everyone had a toilet made of gold, the value of gold would be a joke. And if you say, well, no, if you want to be, blah, blah, what's the value of porcelain? Like, come on, the value of gold is absolutely goofy if everyone owned all of it. And this is what, what happened with Phantom Rage. Everyone owned so much of the set. Now, can there still be value? Yes, but not. It's very unlikely. We'd, like I said, we're more likely to see from the Starlight Rares as we are seeing the number of listings diminish, which is obviously increasing the price points of those Starlight Rares. Secret Rares, 137 listings at Alpha and 87 listings of Zeus. Yeah, I don't think nothing's changing. Um, then we have Tristula Dragon and Icing Imprisonment. So I think the decks, in order to make VFD to play Unfair Yu Gi Oh! More than likely, we'll start making this card. This card's actually really good. Just the Dragon Icing Imprisonment with a five dollar market price is actually down. Well, with shipping, it's actually about five bucks to be honest with you. And there's also a secret version that came out of the um, Basil Legends. Uh, the secret version of Trishula is like two bucks as well. Um, I personally like my Shadow Jump version, but the secret version look nice as well. And uh, yeah, might want to trade for those. Apple Sabota Gods actually might start, might start seeing play. The card didn't see much play in the previous format which is really heavy combo but in mid-range this card has a statistically uh, statistically shown play can it come back yeah this card can absolutely come back Appaloosa and Ivy Masquerina are phenomenal contenders of cards that have a potential chance of becoming staples in your extra deck and if you were looking to get an Appaloosa Boda God Starlight Rare it's actually pretty cheap um it starts roughly around $700 and then it quickly goes to $800 this card at one point was like $2,000. At the lowest point, it was like $200. I'm going to tell you right now, this card would definitely rise in value. No doubt in my mind. It's going to rise. Looking at Starlight Retro Protective Talents, this card is roughly, it's in a weird spot because you got a bunch of new sellers listing it for like $400, and then you got the stores listing it for roughly around $500. I don't know how much this card is really going to go for, but what I do know is this card is still going to be good. Like, let's, let's, let's be honest. This card has three banned cards on it. The odds of your opponent activating a muscle effect in your turn, pretty high. Look at your protective talents. Even I mean, you can buy the secret for 100, start it for 500. It really doesn't matter. The card's going to be just as good as Forbidden Droplet. By the way, Forbidden Droplet is going to break past 100. Just want to throw it out there. I'm not sure if anyone thinks it's not, but yeah, it's going to happen. Union Carrier was not hit. And you know what? No big deal, Konami. I mean, this was not the card that should have been hit, right? Hit Buster Dragon, said Konami. We'll hit Buster Dragon. Bust, Dragon Buster Destruction. I always call it Buster Dragon. Um, you can carry the seven dollar market price. They're not need to be hit. All right. So what we're gonna see now, more than likely, is decks that can play Infinite Negates. Oh, they, they do that still, thanks to Union Carrier. Okay, they do that because of this card. So Infinite Negates with some more, which is roughly around a dollar. Um, also, obviously, if you want your dual term Miss Miss Valley Apex Avions DT2 at a seventeen dollar market price, the value of the card. Well, $17 to $21. And of course, if you want to get your Miss Valley Thunderbird with a $9 market price, the value is actually roughly around seven. Kind of good time to buy these cards. Because in mid-range format, if you go first and you do this, well, you do Infinity Gates and you still have like cards like Solemn Judgment or whatever you have set down, Solemn Strike or whatever, you're probably winning that game. Even though it's mid-range format, every card is trying to gain advantage. If you have a combo, say a combo based off one card that card already didn't hit, you're probably going to do it. Oh, what could he? Draggling players. Don't be upset. Um, you actually have um, Earth Battle Moto Asila Pisu. You can FDK. <laughs> you can FDK this format. 
Dragon Link players. Um, Earth Mount Mount, Elf Round Immortal, Seal of Peace with a $32 market price. Uh, Unlimited is a 16 for the ultis if you want them. But if you want a first edition version, that's going to run you roughly around 50 bucks. Yeah, that's a thing. You can definitely FTK players. No big deal. <laughs> Once again, like I said in the beginning uh, of this video, guys, the bad guy didn't leave. Okay? The bad guy just came back from movie two and three. Now, will this be consistent? I really don't know. I think it's kind of crazy to think that it won't be consistent. I mean, think about it. If your opponent has an infant and a gate, the only way you can really answer them probably would be... Um, what's... what's um, Forbidden Droplet or the other one. I forgot the name of the other spell card. Put it in the comment section down below. There's probably two ways to stop it. If you don't have it, you're probably going to lose that game. Listen... I think Apex Avion, Rishite Thunderbird, that Nathana Gate would be a lot more likely than FTK. But guess what? Dragon League players can still FTK you. We still have FTK in this meta. We had the last meta, and we still have this meta. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. So, with all this hand looping deck gone, by the way, sorry for Noble players, we now have Water players. They are now the dominant hand loop. Yeah, there's other players like this Geech Key, and yeah, you can do it too, I guess, but. Water players have been like the undefeated champion of hand looping you. They also still have like water still survives, and I feel like a lot of players right now that don't think water is whatever will probably lose to water if they play against a water player. I just want to throw it out there. Any Murma Atlantean player it doesn't care. They will always survive the ban list, and they will always smack people post ban list. Right now, as you're watching this video, there is a Murma Atlantean player whose deck is already done. And who's ready to play against you. And if you don't respect their deck, they're going to get a free win on you. I'm just going to throw it out there because everyone forgets this. And I just want to be your, 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 your band's reminder that Murmur Atlantean players will smack you if you forget what they do. They will remind you. Every balance. Back when we used to have physical Yu-Gi-Oh events back in my day. Um, every time we had a balance, after, like the readers right afterwards or the YCS afterwards, a Murmur Atlantean player just comes out of nowhere and buys everybody. And everyone's like, wow, is the deck really that good? No, no, it's not. I mean, it's not terrible, don't be wrong. But the deck just has one, I mean, it has like two established plays, in which it does very good. And the minute you build your deck not acknowledging that, you're just a free win for them. They just walk right over you. Um, I, I definitely think you guys should check out uh, my friend uh, on here on YouTube, uh, Shire. Uh, she knows everything about the deck. Very good player. Uh, always has updated builds, updated profiles um, of Murmo Lanteans. I mean, if you want to talk about a Murmo channel, a Lantean channel, or if you just want to go and learn about them, go check out Shire. Um, I think it's a bit Shire YGO was the old name. You might, you might be still able to find her channel. But if not, check out Shire. It it's really is... Um, it really is a great deck, and I think Shire is probably one of the most knowledgeable players with the deck right now. I mean, seriously, go check the channel out. Uh, up next, guys, Princess Kalagni. I know it's Cologne. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, and the Number Hunters, with a dollar market price, is roughly around 5 bucks. It's against support. People forgot this waifus. I don't care. But I will say, it would be cool if there was like a... I hate the anime young girl waifus. They look kind of whatever. It's kind of creepy. But like an older version of like Cologne... Uh, with the balloon and the same background, like that as a filter, that'd be cool. Or like a play mat would be absolutely balling. Anyone else think that? Like, to mention this card, I'm like, wow, like an older version, stick with the same hair, holding the balloon, and there's that cool, beautiful purple, black, and blue background, which looks gorgeous, by the way. That would look awesome on a play mat. I don't know, something I just, I just looked at, and I'm like, why is this not a thing? Hair Perfection Ultimate Rare. So, with, um,. Dritons, you might need hair perfection. Yeah, V, we can play all hair to Ultimus. Yes, you can do that too. There's different pluses and minuses with each card. Um, I actually just got in today, uh, hair to Ultimus in. I already have hair perfection, but um, yeah, you can do either or. I, just, I, I personally like hair perfection more, but it's good to test both. Hair perfection on Shining Doctors with a $30 market price. The ultimate rare is roughly around 29 what well, 30 bucks to be honest with you. If you want to first a version of the card, it's starting to go down. It's roughly around like 40 bucks. But after that one's gone though, the flip side is, after that's gone, it's going to be hitting around 52 bucks, then 60 and so on and so forth. There's not many on the market. And that's one thing I really want to point out, is that there's not many Ultimate Red Hair Perfections on the market. There's Ghost Red Hair Perfection, but there's more of them. And back to the Kree. Look, this is the way. The Kree of the, uh, of the Rarity Whore is, if it's hard for you to get it, I want a times three. With Hair Perfection, I think you only played two in Drytons, but why not get a third one? Um, so... 
Thunder Dragons might be one of the best decks in this meta. And it's crazy for me to say that right now after everything I just said. I mean, we just talked about a lot of bad, broken cards. Like VFD and then decks that use VFD. But I really do feel like a lot of players are just going to constantly forget about Thunder Dragons. And go, well, V, we have our floating decks. We have um, Burning Abyss, which is obviously a phenomenal floating deck. The definition of a, a floating deck. It's the deck. But with Thunder Dragons, I feel like they, they offer a lot of variance to the game. They can play combo. They can play mid-range. And I feel like that's what's going to happen with this deck. And everybody is going to be forgetting about this deck up until they have to play this version of this deck. I think the best version right now is Thunder Dragon Chaos. But this deck constantly evolves. And that's one thing I've been noticing watching for a while. Thunder Dragons constantly evolve with the meta. Another thing also I want to add is the fact that Ultimate Thunder Dragon Colossus keeps going higher in price point. The card with a $58 market price is roughly around... Well, almost here, seventy dollars. Seventy dollars for a banned card. When this card was about to get hit by the bans, it went down as low as sixty dollars, and now it's almost here, seventy. That tells you how crazy the balance is. It doesn't matter whether it's off this balance or next balance or the bans after that. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players are going to continue holding their copies of this card. Maybe some might even go and start cleaning out the second secret rares. By the way, secret rares, pretty good buy right now. But look at the other dragons. I really do feel like the deck definitely has a lot of potential, and I feel like it's going to see play this meta. It's going to catch players off guard. Are you going to be one of them? Or are you going to be one of those looking out for this deck and making sure that you don't lose to it? Because this deck is a beast that everyone just kind of forgot about because heavy combo, turn one, three in a gate, hacky, take your cards out of your hand. You can't do an extra deck. You can't activate this card. Those kind of decks are, well, technically are the best decks in the game right now. I don't think they're going to be in, in the future. I think Dun Dragons will definitely take advantage of the new meta we're going to be entering in. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my videos. Listen, my voice has been kind of shot right now. Um... For some of you that don't know, I, I, I'm i getting over a respiratory cold. It has a, I had a light cough for the past, Jesus, two weeks. Um, I can't even tell you how many, like, bags of, I mean, bags of car drops I went through. But I am getting over it. So so this is why the videos are coming out a little bit slower. I'm not streaming yet. I'm still working on that. Working on health. Health is always first, okay? Once um, I'm a lot more healthier, uh, I'll be able to do my videos again, which I love doing. I, love, I, want, I wanted to do this video yesterday. This video is coming out late today, um, and I want to do more uh, videos uh, with Yu-Gi-Oh. I have a lot of great ideas for this channel, and 2021 is definitely going to be the year of the Paisano. No doubt in my mind, 2021 is going to be our year. I'm almost excited to, to show you guys what I have that I've been working on for months and years. I'm actually insane excited, and I can't wait to show it to you guys. I think you guys are really going to appreciate it. But right now, we gotta be patient. The holidays are crazy for me via work. The holidays are crazy for me via the cold. I always get a cold during the holidays, by the way. Like, always. Every year, once a year, get a cold. So this was expected. Um, and once everything's back to normal, once we're done the holiday season, uh, I can start really focusing on things I wanna do for this channel, and I have a lot of them. It's not just market watches, it's way more than that. It's your boy V, and you Paisanos, <laughs> you guys also have a great day.